Hi everybody, thank you so much for coming into my kitchen today. It's great to have you here. I am making something out of my mom's cookbook. This is that beautiful 1940s cookbook that um, she gave me. It's so well worn. Look at the, the binding my dad used to duct tape on it to keep it together. It's got lots of smudges and mudges, but oh, I just love this book so much. And so today we're gonna cook out of it. We are making a Sally Lunn. Now there's all kinds of different ways to call it. You'd call it a Sally Lunn bread, a Sally Lunn cake, a Sally Lunn Lunn, that's it. I'll tell you a little bit about it. It originated in uh, England. There was a young woman whose name, I'll, I'll pronounce it here terribly, Solange Luyon. Sally Lund. See, hear that sound? Solange Luyon, whatever. Anyway, in the 19, uh, 1860s, uh, she was working in uh, Bath, England. She made uh, buns and cakes for a baker there. And they were kind of a brioche, eggs, uh, uh, butter, milk, that kind of thing. And uh, so she eventually, uh, the uh, colonists took this and brought it into uh, the United States and George Washington started to eat it and he loved it so much. It was called George Washington's favorite breakfast food. How about that? But there are many, many uh, versions of this and I'm using the version, the version that's in my mom's book. And it would be inter interesting to see if any of you have made a, a Sally Lund that's different than this one. Uh, if you have, please write me. So, having said all that about Sally Lunn, let's get baking. The first thing we're going to do is make a topping that will go on this cake. And what I have here is some brown sugar. Of course, it's packed. It's packed so well I can get it. Oh, there we go. There's a half, uh, half a cup of brown sugar. And then I'm going to add a teaspoon of cinnamon. That's a half. And one. I'm going to break this down here a little bit. And then I'm going to add a tablespoon of melted butter. And then it just says to blend it. So it's going to be kind of a kind of a crumble top. Could have used a little larger bowl, but that's okay. We'll get it together here. I can smell that cinnamon. Boy, does that smell good. I love this kind of a thing. It's interesting, isn't it, that a Sally Lunn that came, you know, came all the way from uh, from France and England and here into the States and turned out to be George Washington's most favorite little uh, breakfast goodie. All right, so I think I think we're gonna be okay there. I might mix it a little bit more off camera, but at least see there, see there, it's well mixed in there. All right, that's great. In this bowl, I have some uh, all-purpose flour, and to that, I am going to add some salt. This is two cups of flour. This is three quarters of a cup, or excuse me, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. That's going in there. And then I'm going to add three teaspoons of baking powder. The recipe will be printed down below in that description box, but we'll talk about it as we go along. So there's three teaspoons of baking powder powder and I'm going to set that spoon aside and I'm going to give this a mix. Uh, your oven should be preheating at 400 degrees and I have an 8x8 baking pan uh, that I have greased and you know a round uh, cake pan would work or anything of that kind of uh, similar size would work just fine. So I'm giving that a good mix to make sure that baking powder and the salt are all mixed in there very well. All right, let's get started on those wet ingredients. I have some granulated sugar. That's a third of a cup. And I'm going to add a third of a cup of avocado oil. This recipe called for shortening, and this is the only variation I made on it. Um, I don't have shortening. I normally don't use shortening, but of course, back in the 40s, you know, at least when this cookbook was made, that's what they were using was shortening. But I don't have any, and you know, shortening is not necessarily great for you. And what I'm going to do now is, now this won't cream up like the recipe calls for it. It says, you know, with the shortening and the sugar and all that, you're going to get a real creamy consistency, which we won't get, but I'll get it well mixed in. So once I have this mixed in and it's, uh, you know, well, well combined, I'll get back to you. So as you can see, I have this, you know, I have it well mixed together. And I'm going to now add the egg and there's some milk 
and a whole egg. I'm going to put this in here. And then this is going to be really, uh, really well combined. Um, it has to be, uh, well, I suspect it's going to be almost on the foamy side. So once that is done, I'll get back to you. Here is my wet mixture. It didn't turn out real foamy, but it certainly got very, very well incorporated. And I'm sure if you had uh, been using shortening, the texture might be a little different, but I think it's going to be just, just fine. So now I'm going to add those dry ingredients to my liquid and the recipe says to just mix it do not beat it so that's why i took the mixer away and we're going to mix this up here you know i uh it's funny there's no vanilla in this recipe and i'm a person who says if you're baking something it's supposed to have vanilla in it but i said nope nope i'm going to follow the recipe as it's written except for the shortening and that's what i am doing so i don't know why there's no vanilla in it it would be interesting to see if there was a problem with vanilla in the 40s. You know, getting vanilla? I'm not sure. So I have just mixed that up. Just gotten that flour in there. Yes, there's no more flour anywhere. So I'm going to bring in my pre-oiled pre pan here. And I'm going to get a spatula. I'm going to get rid of this here. Get myself a spatula so I can work a little bit better. I'm going to pour that in there. It's a nice batter. Very nice batter. I think I've got that bowl pretty well cleaned out. Okay, I think that's good. Set that aside there. And I'm going to spread this out. Spread it a little bit more here, but that's looking pretty even. And it didn't call for the pan to be floured. I was, you know, there was again, I was really tempted to, to flour the pan after I had oiled it. And I said, nope, didn't call for flour, so don't, don't flour it. All right, so that spread out nicely. And now I'm going to get that brown sugar mix. Yum, yum. And I'm just going to, I think I'm going to use my hand. It probably would be easier to get it evenly spread out over the cake top. Well, this looks amazing already. I haven't even baked it off yet. Get all my little corners here. I think, I think I've got it spread out pretty well. Hopefully you don't see any place that I missed. Yeah. Yep, 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 looking pretty good. Show that to you there. How about that? Doesn't that look inviting? So this is going to go into my 400 degree preheated oven and it says to give it about 20 minutes. I don't know, that might be a little short, but I will check it after 20 minutes and once it's exactly done, I'll let you know how much time it took. So once it's baked and out of the oven, I'll bring you back. It smells so good in here. It does. Smell. It really smells good. Now I'm going to bring this up so you can see it. Hopefully, it won't fall off the plate. Looks light and airy. It does look very light and airy, doesn't it? See, see, that? see inside of it there. Okay. The recipe says to serve it hot. Now I have let it sit about ten minutes or so. It's your turn. So I'm very. You know, it looks like a coffee cake. And honestly, there are as I read about this, there are five billion variations Cheers. on the Sally Lun. A lot of them are yeasted, a lot of them are breads, a lot of them have got cornmeal in them, and how are we doing? Mm. What do you think? Is it good? Good. Yeah? I can't wait. The cake. Wow. It looks really uh, light, moist. Really light and moist. Give me a cup of coffee. Mmm. <laughs> it is a coffee cake. Mmm. And why do they call it a Sally Lund cake? As I told them <laughs> at the beginning of this video, there was a, a young woman who lived in France, and her name was uh, Solange Louette or Luan or something. It's written, I can tell you right here. Her name was Solange Luan, mm -hmm. Sally Lund, you get it? 
I get it. No. Anyway, she went to England. Delicious. And she, they know the whole story. I'll tell you the story later, right? Just a hint of saltiness in there? Actually, yes, but it's good, isn't it? It's excellent. Because when I was measuring out that salt, I said, oh, I think that's too much salt. Want it's another bite? perfect. No. I it's, that salt in there is just perfect, isn't mm. it? Wow. This is, you know what this would be, honestly, this would be great as a cake, like with frosting. You know what I'm saying? Like a yellow cake with frosting. The, the, oh, yeah. Oh, You got yeah. it now? I mean, really, this is a delicious, the cake Without itself. Without the topping. Oh, yeah, right. Take the mm. topping off it and put a, a frosting on it. It is such a light, delicious cake. It's been forever since I had a good coffee cake, and this is a great cake. It is excellent. Cake. It is just absolutely ex excellent. I really hope you'll try this recipe. I mean, we're going ah ah about it, but it is good. Delicious. It is really good. Light, well, mm, fluffy, uh, very moist. light. Yes, all of the above, and that topping is delicious. And she took it away. I did, but you get more. <laughs> all right, so that's it for now. We are so happy that you came here, and I want to get. I want to. I have to give myself some sales pitch here. See my Amazon store. I've got a listing down below. We now have ability to put little videos in there about products. We can review the products, tell you what we think of them. And those are in my Amazon store now, so I encourage you to check that out. I, I think that's it. That was enough. Thank you, Sally. <laughs> Thank you, Sally. We are so happy you're here on this crazy ride we call. Gosh almighty, come on. Life? Life. It's life. Thanks a lot, everybody, and we will see you soon. Bye. Bye.